Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer versus Thomas Tuchel. Tomorrow it will be the fifth meeting between Solskjaer and Thomas Tuchel. Solskjaer has beaten Tuchel twice. That's when Tuchel was at PSG. And Tuchel has beaten Ole Gunnar Solskjaer twice. Tuchel has not yet lost as Chelsea manager. By the way, uh, Thomas Tuchel admits PSG's Champions League defeat to us left him in a dark place. Chelsea appointed Tuchel in earlier on this season to replace Frank Lampard. Chelsea sat Frank Lampard after just 18 months in charge. A lot of Chelsea fans disagreed with that decision. They felt as though he should have been given more time. And I know Chelsea are known as a sacking club, but I'm surprised they sat Lampard. Because obviously Lampard is a Chelsea legend. He endured like 13 years as a player for Chelsea. And is their, is their all-time leading goal scorer with 211 goals. But Chelsea have sat to hell of a lot of managers <clears throat> uh, since Roman Abramovich bought the club in 2003. He's a billionaire, he's Roman Abramovich. So yeah, earlier on this season, they sat Frank Lampard. They sat Maurizio Sarri. After just one season, uh, Maurizio Sarri did win the Europa League with Chelsea. He also guided them to the League Cup final. They sat Antonio Conte. Despite him winning the Premier League with Chelsea, they also sat Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho had two spells with Chelsea, won Premier League titles with them. They also sat Di Matteo, they sat Gust Higgin, <coughs> they sat Rafael Benitez, they sat Scarara, they sat Avram Grant, they sat Vias Boas, and they also sat Carlo Ancelotti, and he did very, very well at Chelsea. Chelsea did very, very good recruitment last year. Uh, they brought quite a few players in. They obviously brought Hakim Ziyech in. They brought Termo Werner in. Termo Werner has done nowhere near as good as I expected. Uh, they also brought Ben Chewell in. They brought Kai Havertz in. They brought Thiago Silva in. They brought Milan Sarr in. And they brought Mendy in. They obviously brought them players in when they had Lampard. Chelsea spent over £200 million last year. Chelsea have got some very, very good young players. Uh, they've got that Reese James, who's a very, very good right back. They've got Mason Mount. They've got Billy Gilmore. They've got Christian Pulisic. They've got Callum hudson Adoye, They've got Tammy Abraham. So they've got some very, very good young players. I think probably one of Chelsea's best players is Angolo Kante. Um, obviously, he's won the title at Chelsea. Um, he also won the title during his time at Leicester. Um, I like Rudiger. He's a very, very good centre-half. Um, as Bill Equator, he's good as well. There's a few players I don't rate at Chelsea. Um, I don't rate Jorginho. Uh, Chelsea got him from Napoli. I don't rate Olivier Giroud. I thought Olivier Giroud was much better at Arsenal than he has been at Chelsea. I definitely don't rate Kepa Arizabalaga. He's a very, very poor goalkeeper. Chelsea paid a substantial amount for him. Uh, Chelsea have loaned around 30 players out. And they have let a few players go permanently in recent years. Uh, they did let David Luiz go. He went to Arsenal. Uh, they also let Willian go. He also went to Arsenal. 
I think Chelsea made a bad mistake by getting rid of Eden Hazard because Eden Hazard was very, very good for them. Eden Hazard was a long-serving player at Chelsea. He enjoyed like seven or was it seven and a half years. And he hasn't done good, Eden Hazard, since he's gone to Real Madrid. Don't forget a few years ago, Chelsea had a transfer ban. Uh, we've done business with Chelsea before. Don't forget we got Matic off them and Juan Mata off them. I think we've got the advantage uh, going into this game because of our away record. We haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. The last time we lost away from home in the Premier League was to Liverpool back in January 2020. But there again, um, we've struggled against the top six sides in the Premier League this season. Obviously, we had a 0-0 draw with City, we had a 0-0 draw with Liverpool, a 0-0 draw with Arsenal. We had a 2-2 draw with Leicester, uh, we had that 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. You know, we had the 0-0 draw with Chelsea earlier on this season. That wasn't the best of games, but Rashford had some very good chances in that game. And don't forget, Edison Cavani scored with almost scored with his first touch. This is a must-win game for Man United. Obviously, City have won today, so they're now 13 points clear of us. But we want to finish in the top four this season and I can almost assure that we will finish in the top four. Uh, top four is our aim and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has admitted that the top four race will go down to the wire. Ole did say after our 3-1 win against Newcastle that we are still in the title race. He said the exact same thing after our 1-1 draw with West Brom that we're still in the title race and will not settle for second in the title race. But he made a total different he made a different admission after our 3-3 three, three draw of Everton, you know, he said we shouldn't be considered as title chasers. So we won't win the Premier League this season. We'll we'll win another title at some point. I don't know when. Could win it next season or the next couple of years. It all depends on how our recruitment goes. We beat Chelsea three times out of the four times we played them last season. We beaten them 2-0 at Stamford Bridge. That was our first win at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League since 2012. We beaten them 2-1 in the EFL Cup at Stamford Bridge and we beaten them 4-0 on the opening day of last season at Old Trafford. We've won our last three visits to Stamford Bridge. You know, we haven't got a very, very good record there. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has already confirmed that Cavani... Donny van der Beek and McTominway are all doubts for this game. Uh, Cavani's obviously been out with a muscle injury. Cavani has missed our last three games. He's a miss because Cavani's made a fantastic impact since he's come in. His hold-up play is very, very good. His movement in and out of the box is very, very good. He creates chances and he scores goals. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said not so long ago that Edison Cavani is set for contract extension talks. And Edison Cavani said he wants to stay at Man United for next season, so I do presume we'll trigger that one-year extension on his current contract. We got Cavani on a free transfer last summer. He signed a one-year contract with Man United with an option of a second year. Uh, Donny van der Beek, I think he's been out with a muscle injury. Even if Donny van der Beek would have been available, I don't think he'd have played in this game against Chelsea anyway. Donny van der Beek has played nowhere near as much as I, ex as I expected. Most of Donny van der Beek... What? Oh, sorry.
Most of Donny van der Beek's appearances have come from the bench. He's only started two games in the league. Solskjaer made an admission earlier on this season saying that Donny van der Beek is unhappy at the club with his lack of game time, but uh, Solskjaer has promised him more game time at the club. He needs to play more. You know, we got Donny van der Beek in a deal worth £40 million. We paid £35 million up front and there was £5 million in add-ons. Van der Beek's got a contract with the club until 2025 and van der Beek can play in three different roles. And uh, McTominway, I think he's been out with a knock. And Scott McTominway has enjoyed good games this season. Scott McTominway's best game was the 6-2 win against Leeds. Because uh, he scored twice in that game and got an assist. He did well in the 1-0 win against Watford in the FA Cup third round. And he did well in the 9-0 win against Southampton. McTominway has been part of the club for several years. Just after the first lockdown, he signed a five-year contract with Man United. So he committed his future with the club. Uh, Solskjaer get, uh, provided us with an update on Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba is going to be out for a few more weeks. Uh, he's got a thigh injury. And Paul Pogba is a big miss because we do lack quality in that midfield without Paul Pogba. Popper's performances have been very, very good in recent months. He's been enjoying the best he was enjoying the best period in his Man United career uh, since he rejoined. Earlier on this season, Popper was out with an ankle injury and he was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury. We are still hopeful that Paul Popper will sign a new contract at the club. And if we can't get an adequate replacement for him in the summer, he could sign a new contract. Now, it said earlier on this season that we've held talks with Popper over his future and Solskjaer said he's happy and Solskjaer suggested he could sign a new contract. But Paul Popper has had a long-running transfer saga. Um, he's been linked to a move to Real Madrid. PSG have been in for him and Juventus have been in for him and I think there's a good chance he'll go back to Juventus if he leaves Manu in the summer because Paul Pogba enjoyed four good years with Juventus before he rejoined us and narratives from the Italian press said that Juventus offered us four players in exchange for Paul Pogba. It said the other week we revealed our asking price for Paul Popper. It's one hundred million pounds, but I'm very sceptical we'll get hundred million pounds. I think we can get from between sixty to seventy million pounds. Mini Oriola is desperate to get his client out of the football club in in the summer. Mini Oriol has been criticised a few times and he doesn't have a good relationship with Man United. He recently admitted that he's working quietly on Popper's transfer to avoid offence. He made the announcement back in December, Mini Oriola regarding Popper and Solskjaer was furious with Mini Oriola's announcement because it was just before the game against RB Leipzig in the Champions League. Earlier on this season, we triggered that one-year extension on his contract, so he's under contract on Man United until June 2022. As it stands at the moment, Pop is our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him and this is his fifth season at the football club since he rejoined. Uh, one matter... Solskjaer provided us with an update on him in his press conference yesterday. He's confirmed that Juan Mata is out for a couple of weeks. Uh, probably Mata wouldn't have played in this game anyway against Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea's obviously his former club. Uh, Daniel James, he sustained an injury in our nominal draw with Real Sociedad in the Europa League round of 32 second leg. Don't know how serious James' injury is though. James has been playing a lot recently, and to his credit, he has done very, very well. He did lose his place in the team, didn't he, at one point, and he wasn't playing that much. Uh, there was actually narratives of Daniel James going out on loan back in the January transfer window.
But yeah, in this game against Chelsea, Solskjaer will make changes from the 0-0 draw with Real Sociedad recently. Um, after Chelsea, we do play Crystal Palace, should be winning that one. And then after Crystal Palace, it is Manchester City and that is a massive game. This year's summer transfer window is the biggest in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial career because we do need to make signings. A centre-back and a forward are our two priorities, but I think Ollie's looking to make around four signings in the summer transfer window. Now, our transfer budget has been revealed, and it's not what a lot of Man United fans expected, but there was narratives coming out the other week saying that we are prepared to smash our transfer record in the summer, and Woodward set to hand Solskjaer a huge war chest to sign top players in all areas. I'm expecting the board to back Ollie in the summer transfer window. Uh, Solskjaer did recently confirm that he has got the backing of the owners to get the players he wants to recommend in. I don't think Solskjaer's been backed enough so far as Man United manager. Um, Woodward's come out several times to show his support for Ollie and he did say towards the end of last year he will back him with a long-term plan centred around summer transfer windows. But the board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for several years, reflecting how poor our recruitment policy has been. None of the managers have been backed enough since Ferguson retired and we've overpaid for players. Woodward's been with us since 2012 and the Glazers have been at the football club since 2005. So far, Solskjaer has endured four transfer windows as permanent Man United manager. Yeah, he has made good signings. He's spent over two hundred million so far. You know, he's brought James, Anwan Bissaka, and Harry Maguire in. He's also brought Bruno Fernandez in and Odina Gallo in. Obviously, he's brought Dan Donny Van Der Beek in, Edison Cavani, Facundo Palestri, Ahmad Dilo Traore. And Alex Tellez. But obviously as yet, Solskjaer's not got all the players that he wanted to recommend in. It was a disappointing January transfer window because we only saw one arrival and that was Ahmad Dilo Traore. But Solskjaer said quite a few times during the January transfer window that he wasn't expecting any signings. We was focusing a lot more on the outgoings in January rather than the incomings and we saw a few players leave the club in the January transfer window. We saw Jesse Lingard go out on loan to West Ham. We saw Facundo Palestri go out on loan. We saw Odin Agalo say his farewells to the club. Tiedem Mengi went out on loan. Marcus Rojo left the club and Timothy Fossamensa also left the club. And the other transfer windows, Ollie's in Jord, yeah, we've seen a lot of players leave. But uh, the summer transfer window of this year will be Ollie's fifth transfer window as permanent Man United manager. But like I say, there has been a lot of players on our agenda. Um, I think more players are going to leave Man United in the summer transfer window. Um, I think there's a good chance that Juan Mata will leave. Uh, Solskjaer did say prior to the game against Sociedad that he's not surprised that Mata's linked to a move away from the club. Apparently, there's three Italian clubs that want him. Mata doesn't get in our team now, does he? Earlier on this season, he rejected an 18 million a year contract offer to play in Sergio Arabia. Mata's had a good career at Man United. He's been at the club over six years. He's made over 200 appearances in all competitions and he's scored 50 goals. We got Mata in a deal worth £40 million pounds from Chelsea back in 2014. 
Uh, there's been a lot of United fans saying that we should offload Martial in the summer because uh, Martial has been out of form for the vast majority of this season. But Solskjaer still backs him to rediscover his form. Uh, Solskjaer, by the way, said that he's impressed with Martial's work ethics. You know, if we sold Martial in the summer, I think we'd get 30 million or something like that. But he doesn't have a long-term future at Man United. Uh, but to Martial's credit, he was good last season and he was good in his debut season under Louis van Gaal. Martial has been at the club now over five years. Solskjaer was the one, by the way, that gave him that number nine shirt. Uh, like I said, Paul Pop, there's a chance he'll leave in the summer. There's a few United fans saying that we need to offload Victor Lindelof because Victor Lindelof is a liability. He doesn't compliment Harry Maguire in our back line. I think Bay uh, and Harry Maguire complement each other really, really well. I think Bay's a better centre half than Lindelof, but my element of concern about Eric Bay, he's too injury prone, so in that aspect, he is a liability. Uh, Jones, I'm expecting him to leave this year. I'm surprised Phil Jones didn't leave in January, but Solskjaer said Phil Jones is going to be given a second chance. Jones doesn't get in our 11. He's been out of injury for over a year. Uh, this is Jones' 10th season at Manchester United. You know, he has been a long servant. He's the only outfield player that's still here from the Sir Alex Ferguson era. And as you all know, Solskjaer's confirmed that he's prepared to sell either De Gea or Dean Henderson in the summer. I think we should sell David De Gea in the summer. Um, apparently, apparently, we're looking at Donnarumma from AC Milan as a possible replacement for De Gea. If we sell De Gea in the summer, I think we can get from between 50 to £60 million. Pounds. You know, De Gea is going to remain our number one for at least this season, but Solskjaer's already warned De Gea that his number one jersey is under threat, and you had Neville coming out the other week saying that Solskjaer must deal with a goalkeeper situation because he's facing a goalkeeping dilemma. And Skull said that De Gea is becoming a real problem. In the last couple of years, he's made calamitous mistakes, De Gea, and reflecting on that, he's become a liability, but... A few years ago, he was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. De Gea has been with us since the Ferguson era, and this is his 10th season at Man United, so he has been a long servant. Uh, Dean Henderson has threatened to quit Man United if he's not assured the number one role. Uh, we've revealed our asking price. It's £40 million. Dean Henderson has done well in the games he's played in this season. Like I've said, I think he's now reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper because he has got that experience behind him. Um, he enjoyed two successful loans with Sheffield United. Before the start of this season, he signed a six-year contract with Dean Henderson, so he committed his future with the club. And all he's admitted, it's becoming more and more difficult to leave Dean Henderson out of the side. But I think if we had to let Dean Henderson go, we won't let him go permanently. We'll loan him out. Because I think he's got a long-term future at Man United as Henderson because he's got a lot of development in him. But Sky Sports recently said that Dortmund and Tottenham were leading the race for him and Chelsea and West Ham have also expressed an interest. So there you go. Like I've said of in regards to Solskjaer, I think he needs to win a tro needs to win a trophy at Manchester United to avoid the sack. Uh, we haven't won a trophy since 2017, and a club of our stature needs to be winning trophies. You know, the Europa League is a chance of a trophy. You know, the FA Cup is also a chance of a trophy. I am Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in. 
I don't know if he's a long-term manager for Man United, but he's going to be given at least another season at the football club. I'm expecting Solskjaer to sign a new contract with Man United. Um, he did recently say that Solskjaer's future is in doubt because Solskjaer admitted that nobody spoke to him uh, yet over a new contract. But he said a few weeks ago, we'll wait until the end of the season to begin negotiations over a new contract for Ole, and we could offer him a new two-year deal on one condition, and that's if we qualify for the Champions League. Ole is into the final 18 months of his current contract. When he got the job permanently back in March 2019, he signed a three-year contract with the club. This is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's second full season at Man United. I've probably, I've probably got to say he is the best manager since Ferguson because we've had periods under Rolly where we've been very consistent because we didn't see consistency for a long time. We've also enjoyed those bad periods as well under Rolly. We really, really have. And earlier on this season, Rolly was looking not to be sat. He was looking not to be sat at the first part of last season because we enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. So we do deserve credit for sticking with him. Solskjaer has been criticised a lot as Manchester United manager. But I think he's made very, very good progress because there's been some games where Solskjaer's got the best out of the team. Um, he's improved certain players. Uh, we've got a very, very good away record in the Premier League, you know. Ole has got us to the FA Cup quarterfinals. He's got us to the last 16 of the Europa League. You know, got us to the EFL Cup semi-final this season. Lost 2-0 to Man City. You know, Oli did well last season in his first full season at the club. Guided us to three semi-finals. Got us qualification for the Champions League and got us a third place finish. So he deserves credit for that. And reflecting now on Solskjaer's been at the club, he's gained some managerial experience. He hasn't got that proven pedigree as a manager. Um, obviously, before he was with us, he was at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder, but they're not a big club. And before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff, and he enjoyed a very, very short tenure with Cardiff because his record at Cardiff was disastrous. But if Solskjaer doesn't succeed as Man United manager, we'll still always adore him because at the end of the day, he's a club legend. He was a great player for Man United for 11 years. But yeah, we appointed him in in December 2018 and he's been permanent Man United manager since March 2019. Ollie is our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. We've sat three managers since Ferguson. That was Moyes. Sat him after 10 months, the worst manager we've ever had. We sat Slurie Van Gaal after two years, despite him winning the FA Cup. And we sat Jose Mourinho after two and a half years, despite him winning three trophies in his first season. And we're not even really known as a sacking football club. We haven't been the same team since Ferguson. And like I've said before, no, one at Man, no manager at Man United or no manager in general is going to replicate what Ferguson did. Ferguson had a 27-year tenure. You know, he brought success to Man United. He must have won over 30 trophies, including 13 Premier League titles. But Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at the football club. So, like I've said, some managers do need time. I think mistakes have been made since Ferguson left, and that's why, obviously, we haven't been the same team. Uh, Ferguson made one mistake and that was ever recommending Moyes in. Um, I think a lot of the players we've brought in in the last, what, seven and a half, eight years haven't been the right calibre players for Man United. You can say we made a mistake by obviously bringing Woodward and that and the Glazers into the club as well. Um, a lot of United fans have said that Solskjaer got the job too soon. 
So there you go. So anyway guys, on my next video I'll be giving you an update on some transfer news. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. Take care, God bless, see you all again very, very soon.